We're back, uh, well, we're back. We're starting a new series um, that I'll be doing over the next eight weeks or so. Uh, a group of students and I are painting along the North Shore in Massachusetts, visiting towns like Gloucester and Rockport and others. And this is Pierce Park in East Boston, which has a beautiful view of the harbor and you can see Boston in the background. It serves as today's motif, and I'm getting started by kind of talking about a center of interest or a focal point. This is a small tonal study that you see in front of you done to kind of organize the background, the foreground, the boats that I plan to use around a center of interest. And um, as I get into the painting, I'll talk more about it, but I wanted to just briefly describe center of interest is uh, an area in the painting that has a little more uh, sharpness, focus, uh, tells a little bit more of the story in the painting. And uh, when you're composing, it's a good idea to use this because it can guide some of your painting thoughts. Here you see the center of interest portrayed by that cross uh, in the painting. So let's get started. Um, it's a very complex scene, especially in the background, but uh, I feel this would be sort of detrimental to what I would like to focus on. By detrimental, I mean distracting. So I'm trying to treat the background very abstractly. Um, I know that the shapes back there are skyscrapers. In this case, they're strong verticals and um, sort of box-like shapes that form uh, this idea of the the skyline of Boston. If you refer to the photograph, there's an awful lot going on. It's a very busy scene. My intention is to reduce that to sort of an abstract pattern, thereby keeping the focal interest uh, mostly in the, uh, the mid-ground uh, with some interest in the background and some interest in the foreground reflections. That's the the goal that I thought about before doing this painting. And I made um, some changes to uh, the image. Uh, if you notice, the horizon is very high in the painting and not and that allows me to focus on the the bottoms of the buildings and the shoreline, but not a lot on the sky or what's going on above the buildings. And that also lets me bring more attention, more energy to the mid-ground and especially to the foreground uh, by means of reflections. I'm using a lot of cool grays. The day was not a, a strong sunny day as it developed. It uh, became sort of a, a little bit of a hazy and diffuse light day, which can be problematic. It's hard to sometimes get your bearings when you don't see strong shadows. In this case, I'm respecting that and using that, I feel, to my advantage by not um, overstating the shadows too much in the painting. I'm, I'm using them uh, minimally to show some edges of buildings, especially through this section where I want, a little, I want the buildings to come forward a little more and have a little greater presence, but along the periphery and up towards the corners, no, I'm keeping it uh, even simpler. Even this, uh, where I'm developing the, the area, is very, very simplified if you compare it to what we saw, what I saw, and <clears throat> what is actually there. There's literally thousands of windows. There's many, many boats, many buildings upon buildings upon buildings. I made a conscious effort to avoid that or, let's say, reduce it to something simpler. So here I am uh, starting to place the boat. Uh, this boat is, uh, was uh, in front of us for a good period of the day and didn't move, so I'm using it as the motif in this case. I'm combining it with uh, two other boats, one to the right and there'll be one behind. But this is the main boat. I wanted to get a start on this to kind of place it in an area where I feel it's comfortable and I can exploit uh, its size, I can exploit the shape, and I can exploit the reflections. 
So it's a white boat, but you see I've started with a pretty deep gray. Uh, as I develop it, I place some stronger edging um, along the, uh, the bottom of the boat and the wood edging that uh, creates the top of the boat to, uh, with a dark color, this, this addition actually makes the boat feel, uh, appear to be white again, even though we start with this dark gray. These are not easy shapes. Um, boats, cars, houses, buildings, these man-made shapes are difficult for us to draw, difficult for us to render. There's um, elements of symmetry, there's elements of um, oh, just a, a lot of uh, intricate lines that go into making a boat. Our eye is very sensitive to symmetry, so if we make a mistake with it, it uh, shows up in a glaring fashion, it becomes a bother. So the only remedy for that is just practice. That's simply the way you become able to draw these, these difficult shapes. And I don't profess to be a, a, a boat person. I don't know much about boats. I know some of the terminology, uh, the stern, the keel, the mast, these sorts of things, but I really don't have a, a great or a strong um, history with boats. So I'm, I do my best. Uh, the things that I do know are, are s that sloping edge that forms the front of the boat is a beautiful line and it's often the most difficult to, to render. The bottom of the boat it meets the water typically is a little darker and you see discoloration there. Uh, there's symmetry in the boat, and to make it feel like it's resting on water is no easy task. So um, when I face boats, when I'm doing these boats, I always feel a little uncomfortable. In any case, I'm doing my best job to, to, fl to make that boat feel, you know, uh, like it should, kind of resting on the ocean, resting on the bay. Uh, we see the masts are, are gathered, they're not, I'm sorry, the sails are gathered, they're not really flying. And I painted them with a strong blue to make them stand out. And as I do that, I see the city is now retreating. The city is feeling further and further away. I think that'll continue as long as I am careful not to place too many darks in the city. And uh, when I go to place the masts, um, that will be an additional push uh, to put the city further back. I'm creating a focal, sort of an epicenter or a focal center uh, between these two boats. There's, they kind of, one boat points towards the right, uh, the other boat, and that second boat por points towards the city. So there's sort of a, by means of these, um, arrows, the tips of the boats, the edge of the boats, they kind of move us through the painting from one to the other, and that space between the boats becomes uh, a very strong attraction. And uh, this is where I consider the center of interest to be. And I, as I develop the painting, especially as I finish the painting, I am aware of that and conscious to mute some areas that are perhaps too loud or exaggerate that area uh, by means of edges or by means of lights and darks to make it a, a strong center of interest. I don't want the eye to stop at that point. I want it to, to move on. In fact, we often create a sort of minor center of interest uh, to pull us in a different direction towards the painting. Um, and keep the eye moving in a direction that, it, that we want it to. So that's an important place to start with your artwork when you're creating an image, is to really consider uh, one area of the painting to be the, the sort of focal point, the center of interest. Another good um, strategy is for that center of interest to be offset. One place we don't want it to be uh, is right in the middle of the painting. What happens is you start, you're starting from a point of 
perfect symmetry or perfect balance and that is ends up being rather how should i say boring or uninteresting if you have it right in the uh, middle putting it slightly to the left slightly to the right slightly high slightly low creates an imbalance this imbalance allows uh, actually creates a bit of energy in the painting so we're finishing up the painting and adding a few things here and there. Uh, you can see that it's, it's starting to get a finished look to it where we're, we might make some adjustments now to, to, uh, to our focal area or to the periphery to make it a little less interesting or a little vague. And these adjustments are based on sort of that that's idea of the center of interest and where we want the eye to travel in the painting. Now you feel it going from that first boat towards the second boat. That second boat uh, points you in the direction of the city and there's some energy back there in the city that, that pulls you back there as well. Uh, the masts. I tilt the, the page so that I have a little better control of these masts. It's, um, they're straight lines, it's true, but I make an effort to make them broken lines. In other words, it's not a perfectly uh, connected line and it's not a uh, necessarily a perfectly straight line. Sometimes I bend them, sometimes I, I break them, so it feels a little more natural to my eye. If it's a perfectly connected line from boat to top, it feels a little static to me. This is the, the finished painting as far as I'm going to go with it and the background retained that abstract nature. I'm pleased with it as did the reflections and the boats themselves have a more finished, a more polished feel to them. Uh, I feel that they, they grab our eyes and lead us to the back of the painting by means of that pointed tip. And this, I've made a little diagram here so you can see what my thinking was in the center of interest. The circle represents that area of interest, and I'm showing you that it's a different distance from each side of the paper. That's a great formula, if you will, for, for calculating your center of interest when you do your painting. Now, this is another variation uh, on the painting that I did. I did several little studies that day. This is one of them. And you can see I'm using only two boats in that case. Here's another one, the city behind with, a, with the idea of a regatta uh, moving in front of the city. And I did a third when we saw a big schooner passing in front of the city. And uh, these, these are small studies, but I can see developing them into finished paintings. So I hope this is helpful in thinking about your painting, uh, composition, and a center of interest.